we had a grocery store, two grocery stores, and there was a bank and a barber shop. And those things all were replaced just because we're so close to Seward. When the owners died, that nobody took over. Veronica Gable remembers a time when her hometown of Bee, Nebraska had more to offer. Over the years, several of the community's businesses have been forced to close their doors, including the school. But Bee isn't alone. Rural communities across the state have faced similar issues as economic conditions have changed. It's no longer economically feasible and essentially not profitable for some grocery stores or some banks or some auto dealers or post offices. And um, without any mandate or without any, any sign from above, these folks are saying we can't exist in this type of economy. When businesses like this close, it can often lead to a decrease in population because people feel that the town can no longer provide the basic services they need. As the community loses local businesses, that really affects the quality of life. And at some point people say, you know, maybe I need to move up the road to the next larger community because there's just not enough here to really meet my needs. However, organizations like the Nebraska Community Foundation focus on helping rural development. These groups say that in order for there to be change, there have to be driven leaders in these communities. When people leave and when businesses die, hope evaporates. And there is no way that any organization is going to save every single small town if that small town does not have the leadership to rally the troops. Officials from these organizations say that if communities don't start acting now, there may be serious consequences in their future. I think communities that are in, not really focusing on this, not investing in their future, uh, eventually they're going to be one of those ghost towns. And um, there's a lot of communities today that in another 50 years won't be here because of their own decision not to act in behalf of their future. Despite the challenges, Jordison says small communities still have a lot to offer their residents and potential business owners. You can live in rural Nebraska with, with internet connections and with being able to start your own business. Uh, you're able to, to live in rural Nebraska and make a success for yourself. For Star City News, I'm Carson Stokebrand reporting. The issue is, is there economic opportunity? A community that doesn't have economic drivers isn't going to survive. That's Sandy Schofield, director of the University of Nebraska Rural Initiative. Officials from similar organizations say that when community businesses are faced with economic troubles, the town's residents must get involved. People need to be engaged, um, and, and towns are going to need to want to grow. And that's, that's, that's the first thing, is having an attitude of, of wanting to be a successful small town. But communities like Bee, Nebraska, with a population of just over 200, have decided to take action through fundraising and applying for federal grants in order to protect the community they love. We have local people who are strongly tied to the Bee community who are passionate about seeing success. Bee recently created a community foundation with the goal of raising money to restore the town's historic dance hall. They feel that preserving buildings like this will help rejuvenate the community. This building is our, our lifeline to people knowing about B and to bringing people to town and, and having a fun recreation place so people don't have to drive to Lincoln for everything. You know, they can come right here and down. Since we started this foundation, we have had some more and more of a gathering of people come together and that's what the heck we're hoping to do in the future to get the community back into togetherness. Organizations like the Nebraska Community Foundation help towns such as Bee by providing guidance on raising funds and stimulating their economic development. What we do is teach people how to look at their local resources, look at their local assets and say what can we build on? What do we already have here to make it better, to make our community stronger? There are economic development professionals in, in virtually every county across the state who are very, very focused on, on finding opportunities for people. Despite the challenges, Gregorus remains optimistic about Bee's future and believes the town still has a lot to offer its residents. Bee's a great place to live, and like the old saying goes, it's a honey of a place. For Star City News, I'm Carson Stokebrand reporting. They say our best and brightest are leaving the state, and um, it's, it's true, we, we lose a lot of, of people who are in their, their 20s and 30s. 
That's Tom Jordison of the Nebraska Renaissance Project. Officials like him say that many communities across the state are losing their young population after they graduate from high school. It's an issue that we have to get better at because you can't continue to lose 10% of your population each decade and hope to be around in another century. The concept of bringing people back is one that is, is very, very crucial to the future of Nebraska and the future of these towns, if people coming back, and it happens quite frequently. Officials say these students are leaving because of lack of career options. However, some small towns are fighting this population loss by creating opportunities that are of interest to a younger generation. What we're trying to, to, to get people to understand about raising money and granting it back is invested in ways that young people will want to choose to return to a rural area. And more and more kids are choosing to return to rural areas. Yes, they're leaving for a sojourn to get their education, you know, to maybe find, start a career someplace. More and more people are moving back. These communities are hoping that young people will look at rural Nebraska as a great place to live and raise a family. Go away, see the world, uh, maybe work someplace, get some experience and bring it back. And a lot of communities are putting a focus on trying to accomplish that. Not necessarily saying, hey, you ought to stay here from the day you graduate from high school and never leave, but rather, when you're ready to raise a family, think about the quality of your hometown. For Star City News, I'm Carson Stokebrand reporting.